Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and today I want to talk about optimizing X Plane 11 for virtual reality using Fly Inside. That's how I play X Plane 11, and I've been spending the last actually two days, probably a total of about three or four hours, I should say, tweaking and playing with different settings to try to get the most optimal setting. And I think I've actually thankfully stumbled upon what I think is the best setting. Now there's a number of factors here. Actually, there's three factors involved. There's X-Plane 11, it's graphics settings. There's the fly inside settings. And then you also have the Oculus Rift CB1 settings, right? So those are the things that you sort of have to tweak to get the right settings. And I actually found that the fly inside and the X-Plane settings, there are definitely some interrelations that you have to be uh, careful with um, to get things working properly. So anyway, I'm not going to pretend to know how these systems are designed. I just don't know. I'm a user trying to get the best out of it from reading and from my knowledge of, you know, tweaking graphics with other games. So I'm running MSI Afterburner so you can see the frame rates and CPU utilization and GPU utilization. Hopefully that'll be helpful. So, but let's tackle this from the outside in, okay? So first, let me show you how I have Oculus Rift set up. I'm basically using the debug tool, and I can pull that up here. All right, and you can see here, I've got pixels per display set at 2.0. Now this is the debug tool that you can download on Oculus site with the SDK. It allows you to increase the sampling or the pixel rate of the display inside Oculus Rift. So the default's one, and one is 100%, right? What I've done here is I've I increased, effectively doubled the pixel density rate to 200%. Now I found with my setting that doing this, you can see I'm, I think I'm around 54%. So I'm taking advantage of getting the best possible uh, visuals out of the Oculus Rift. And that allows me to see these dials on the dashboard very clearly in 3D. I mean, I can read the lettering and numbering on the, uh, the GPS display. So close-up objects are very clear. Now, as with anything in VR, you have screen door effect because you're in the headset, your eyes are so close to the display that you see some pixelization. I mean, the, the display rates are just above 1080p in the Oculus Rift or even the Vive. So you're gonna get some pixelization and some blurriness as you look out into the distance, okay? But it's as clear as it can be by doing it at 200%. So I'm lucky to be able to do that. Now this is gonna, you gotta be careful with this setting. It's gonna depend on your graphics card. If you have a lower end graphics card, like a 970 or below that, you wanna be very careful with this setting. I'm using an EVGA 1070 super clocked. So I'm, I'm, luckily I'm able to, uh, to pull this up to 200% and get the most out of it. So be very careful when using that setting, make sure you read about it. So that's the Oculus side. Now let's take a look at the fly inside. And I spent a lot of time tweaking fly inside XP so I could get the right optimal setting. So let me bring that menu up here. Now I have graphics resolution at 2880 by 1620. There is another option at 3840 by 2374. That's significantly more pixel density. I did try that a number of times, a number of ways, and the result that I had was I wasn't able to get high enough frame rates in the headset uh, it was well below 90 frames per, se per second, and I was, you know, getting a lot of judder and uh, just not a, a good experience. So I settled on 2080 at 1620 as the best rate for me. Now, I may be able to improve that with a higher graphics card. If I had a 1080 Ti, which is something that I'm thinking about, maybe 3840 by 2374 would work better for me. I don't know. But I know that 2080, 1620 for me is the best. I have enable Oculus ASW off. I did try it on with mixed results. Uh, one time it was uh, providing great frame rates and then I reloaded again and I was getting frame rates at like 40 frames per second. So um, in, the, in the headset. So I turned that off, right? I've got asynchronous time warp at high speed for the uh, fly inside. And I've got monitor display at FPS at unlimited, obviously. FXAA is off, VR optimization is off, and I have MSAA disabled in Fly Inside because my theory is that the anti-aliasing is being done by X-Plane 11, 
and I'll show you those settings in a second. And when I did have this on, it definitely affected frame rate um, in my case. So I turned it off and it seemed to be a better result. So anyway, I've got that off on fly inside. And that's how I have fly inside set up. So let's go back into the simu simulator. So now we're back on the runway, okay? And you can see, I'm gonna pull up the frame rates. You can see the frame rates that I'm getting there and then the upper left-hand corner. But I'm gonna pull up the fly inside. It'll show us we're getting 33 frames per second and 90. Um, let me just move that up here so you can see that a little bit better, okay? And this will actually, I've, I've actually seen FPS go up to like in the 40s, right? So, pretty good, right? I mean, if, as long as you're, I think, above 30, in the 30s or 40s, you're going to have a pretty good experience in X-Plane 11. Um, and uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let's take a look at the X-Plane 11 settings. All right, so what I have here is I've got my rendering options, visual effects I have to high, because when I had it above that at the highest setting, I was getting some really strange artifacts in the windshield, and I found that by running this on a high instead of the max setting, those went away. So that's my setting for visual effects. Uh, texture quality I have at maximum. I haven't tested this going to the max uncompressed, but for now I'm leaving it at maximum. Anti-aliasing I have at two times SSAA, FXAA, okay? I have draw shadows on off, okay? And I've got uh, draw parked, aircraft on i've got reflection detail off okay because i read that there was an issue with that and i have number of world objects at high now i did a number of tests on this and i found that there's, there's not a lot of frame rate difference between medium and high i mean high is a little less frame rates but uh, i get more world objects because after all in flight sim any flight sim what you're looking for is really good graphics and a lot of detail so that it gives you the, um, that immersive feeling. So that's the sort of the trade-offs that you have to work with, all right? So I did try it on maximum and that definitely lowered the frame rates quite a bit and actually put me into a situation where I was getting a lot of uh, stuttering. High seems to be the right spot for me with my configuration, all right? All right, so those are my settings and they seem to be working the best for me. Gets me a frame rates above 30, reduces the stuttering when I'm flying, and gives me good visuals, and that's what I'm looking for. I mean, the anti-aliasing I think could be better, and I'll probably play with that a little bit, see if I can improve that. But I'm considering going to a 1080 Ti, upgrading to one of those from a 1070. I'm not sure how much improvement I'll get on X-Plane 11, but I play a lot of different games, so doing that would benefit me in, in a couple of different ways. So that's something I'm considering. But for now, with the card that I have, I'm getting a really good experience in VR with the settings that I have, so. I'm going to take off here and just do a fly into Boston. I should let you know that I'm using the advanced scenery for Boston uh, that I got on xplane.org created by Mr. X6, which is really good. I highly recommend it. I'm going to take off here from runway 32, and so you can see some frame rates as I fly around. So let's do that here. RPMs up, break off. And then we'll bank left into Boston. Let me just show you the FPS. So I'm, see, I'm getting 90 constantly with uh, in the flying side, which is what I want, right? There's my 90 frames per second. And I'm getting in the 30s, high 30s, which is good. I mean, it's a very nice, smooth experience, which is what I want. And I'm coming into an area with a lot of detailed objects. So there's a lot of drawing going on here and it's pretty cool. And my visuals are very good. I feel like I'm getting a, a good experience as far as the detail of the objects that I'm looking at. So all in all, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna fly over these buildings just to give you a sense as more objects come into the closer field, the frame rates are going to change. So you can see that. And you can see I'm still at 91, 90, which is good. Nice, smooth experience, which is what you're looking for. 
I'm keeping my head to the left here so you can see the uh, afterburner numbers because it's, it's hard to see them against the sky and I'm unable to change the colors for some reason so I just want to make it a little easier for you to see. Yeah, so this is a great, you know, for me, this, this is working perfectly. It's a great experience. It's what I'm looking for. It's the, a good balance of number of objects, texture quality, and smoothness of the of frames, which is what, what you're looking for. Just turn my head a little bit here so you can see the detail there. Pretty good, right? And it's definitely a nice realistic feel. And having the Oculus at 200% definitely makes a difference in the uh, visual quality, especially as you look further out onto the horizon. You get a lot less blurring effect. You know, it's just the way it is until you get into like 4K displays for uh, the VR, which is, you know, probably it's the next generation and probably a couple of years away, you know, this is how it's going to be. But, you know, it's, it's a trade-off. Someday we'll have, you know, similar uh, graphic quality to what you see on a 2D monitor in a, in a uh, VR headset, though that would be a great day. But uh, today we're living with uh, uh, what we have now, so... What I, I'm very happy with this, and you know, as one of the subscribers said in one of the videos, once you start flying in VR, it's very difficult to go back to 2D uh, flight simulation. So, That's going to do it for me. We're going to just fly over Logan here. It was a really good learning experience. I feel like I've got X-Plane 11 and Fly Inside tweaked just the way I wanted to. And until I can afford to upgrade to a 1080 Ti, uh, this is how it's going to be. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Please like this video if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe to Bambino Games for more simulation. Have a great day.